we have a DAF CF with engine warning and exhaust system malfunction. With no additional information supplied from the driver, surprise surprise, we can plug our VCI into the passenger side and run quick check on Davy. This will help us identify the DTCs in the PCI ECU. With two possible components that could be causing this fault, I need to establish if it was the E-Fan causing this or the BPV. With the BPV having every known fault under the sun, I wanted to check its condition and then look at the E-Fan, which will be in another video, as I'm sure you'll be asleep by the end of this. With my apprentice being away at DAF in Bristol, I was forced to tip the cab myself. With the cab over, we can now check the condition of the BPV, and by the looks of it, the bearing has collapsed. So it was time to get more invasive and gather some tools to identify if this was all mechanical or if we had any other electrical issues with it also. First things first, we're going to fit our test leads to the plug for the BPV down by the NOx sensor before CAT ECU. With the wiring disconnected, we can plug in our test lead and use the breakout box to check our powers and grounds and with the ignition off, we can measure the resistance for CAN. With this out the way, I'm more than happy to replace the BPV now so we can get the coolant out of the vehicle. So we have a few things to remove before we can get the BPV off the engine and out the chassis. To start, this knock sensor before cat needs to be removed, followed by this temperature sensor after BPV, which if you're lucky will come out. Next we'll need to take the fuel dosing valve off. This injects extra amount of fuel directly into the exhaust gas stream causing temperatures to rise to around 550 degrees during regeneration. Due to these temperatures this valve is liquid cooled and as such we need to remove the coolant pipes that go to and from this valve. This pipe is the fuel supply pipe which comes from the fuel intake module via the fuel shut off valve. Once this bolt is removed the bolt securing the fuel dosing valve can be taken out and we can then remove the last water pipe securing this to the exhaust, which has now got lost forever on the workshop floor. We now need to remove the coolant pipes to the BPV. Yes, more bloody coolant pipes. With this pipe for the BPV rather easy to undo, I turned my attention to the pipe on top of the BPV which is the pressure sensor after the BPV. With me running out of components to remove above, I head under the truck and remove the downpipe clamp and ensure it's loose before I start to remove this nightmare of a clamp bolt. If you've ever tried to hold up a BPV, get the clamp on and get this on in one go, I take my hat off to you. With the clamp off, we can wrestle the BPV loose and out the chassis. With our new BPV out the box, I can show you what fails and what causes one of the fault codes, which is failure to reach position. As you can see, the butterfly valve bearing has collapsed. This is operated by the electric motor, and when the vehicle attempts to regenerate, it usually fails to reach its target position, throwing a DTC. Unfortunately, the butterfly valve and bearing is a non-replaceable item, and the whole BPV assembly needs to be replaced. The only items I require off this old unit is the bracket for the fuel dosing valve, the coolant pipes for the electric motor, I will fit new seals to these coolant pipes, it's like playing Russian Roulette using these old hard seals again otherwise.
Another thing I won't mess about with is the boss for the knock sensor. I never had much luck getting these out so I always fit a new one. My other trick is I put instant gasket on the seal to hold it onto the turbo as unlike DAFs of old it doesn't have a dowel to align the turbo with the BPV. So not only do you have to hold this BPV up and fit a clamp, you also have to juggle a gasket too. Now how did I get this out the chassis again? With the help of my friend Gravity I get the BPV in and slip the new clamp in between the turbo and the BPV but to my surprise I got them together and the clamp over relatively quickly. With the clamp tight I can start rebuilding the components. First with the pipe for the pressure sensor, next the temperature sensor and finally the knock sensor. With the sensors out the way I can refit the coolant pipes and the fuel dosing valve. If you want more of an explanation on how this BPV works, why it was introduced, I will put an article up on my blog over at trucktechuk.com. With a few things left to go now, like plugging in this damn thing, we won't be needing these test leads now so they can fuck off. We can get this plugged in, powered up and the clamp on the exhaust while we're down here with my favourite impact gun. With the wiring secure in the clamps, I can finish up with a cable tie or two, then look to get the cab down and the coolant into the engine. With me still mourning over the loss of my electric coolant pump, I'm forced to use this poor man's coolant pump, I mean watering can, to refill the radiator. Now, do you remember the EFAN fault from the beginning of the video? Yeah, so if you want to see that get diagnosed, you'll need to head over here. Somewhere. But not right now, as I've not done the video. I have other cool stuff I've been working on for doing diagnosis, so much so I had to buy myself a 3D printer, which you'll find out about in my next video. That's enough for that.